I'm Ben Peterson. Um, you know, my farm name is Vital Grains. Uh, and what we're really passionate about is this emerging uh, genre of agriculture that I think is coalescing around the name regenerative. And I think and tried to drive home in my talk today that there are companies out there that want this value statement. It's a very real value statement. It's not uh, hyperbole, it's not conjecture, it's not assumption. There are real facts behind uh, what we do when we strip till, when we use cover crops, when we responsibly apply nutrients that mean big things for the environment. They mean big things for water quality, big things for sustainability is kind of an old buzzword. Uh, but it does make agriculture much more sustainable, much, uh, we'll be able to do what we're doing for uh, many more years uh, if we can get these practices adopted. So everybody wins. Uh, I think adoption, it, it seems to me, for my ch the cheap seats where I farm and people I talk to, adoption may have slowed a bit uh, because the mechanism for getting guys talked into doing these things, trying new stuff, uh, especially when commodity prices sag a little bit, isn't there. You know, a whole lot of cheerleading is kind of ineffective sometimes when we're facing economic headwinds, when there's a real fear of change, when we would be the only ones taking the risk, doing, uh, uh, putting into practice new, new things on our farms, when if we lose 10 bushels, that might be our profit margin on, on a corn acre. So what we're after and there are real partners in industry that are looking to invest in this are people that are going to incentivize us to in my case do the things that we've gotten adept at doing try new things on top of that uh, uh, other farmers like myself that can prove that they've been proficient at these things if, and we've got all this abundance of data now where we've recorded everything we're doing in the field and we can document it in so many different ways that I, I think the time has come, uh, especially with technology like blockchain chain coming of age or about to, where even though commodity agriculture is big and we measure things in the billions and billions of bushels, we can do this on a mass balance scale, not necessarily an identity preserved bushel for my farm to this big end user, but these companies want to positively affect the, the corn supply chain. And I think the best way they can do that is through some sort of mediator or even directly with us, uh, incentivize us to continue carrying that torch. You know, the, the groups on that slide that I, I referenced that are trying to promote regenerative practices, their heart is in the right place, their minds are in the right place. I unfortunately think that in a lot of cases, they're their funding, their efforts are directed in towards things, towards publicity that are not driving us to make real change. Um, uh, I think the onus going forward is going to be on everybody, really. I think it's going to be on uh, end users like your Tysons, your McDonald's and uh, uh, General Mills and on and on. You know, companies that have really put forth some effort as of late to try to get into this space in, in a more meaningful fashion uh, it, and, and farmers, right? It's, it's just, it's going to be a team effort. And ultimately we're dealing with a more savvy brand of consumer and it's going to be increasingly more so with the flow of information and with this increased focus on where our food comes from, uh, how we're infecting the environment, uh, you know, things like climate change, water quality, as I've discussed before, uh, there's real money they're going to be willing to shell out to ensure that they're getting food sourced with ingredients raised regeneratively. Uh, and it's just a matter of how we organize that and how we, uh, what partners we employ to get that value chain working, functional, and in a way that it's not overly complicated. So I had said in my, in my talk that it was six years or four years ago that I went to the first ever, but this is the sixth annual, it said right behind me. So time flies when you're having fun, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, it's just always great to be in a room with people that share some of the same ideals you do. Uh, a lot of them, really, a lot of the same ideals um, where we can swap ideas. You know, 
the simpler parts of will it work? Uh, is it effective? Is it a long-term solution? In a lot of cases, that's out of the way because uh, there are so many experienced strip tillers here. Uh, and the new people, well, you have to be pretty serious about it to pay a registration fee, come and sit and, and devote some time to this. Uh, so the new people are hungry for that information and uh, want actionable intelligence so they can go back home. So that, to me, that's always a fun environment. And especially when I can come share my ideas about how we can think more uh, large scale, even globally, uh, when it comes to our environment and kind of make that a new reason why we do what we do. You know, as I said in my talk, we've got such a great story that tugs at your heartstrings. You know, I shared my farm story. I, I, I would bet you 10 out of 10 farms have some version of that, uh, you know, sacrifice and hard work and uh, uh, just bone crushing labor and and all being worth it in the end because they pass that farm on to the next generation. I mean, it's such a fantastic story and it resonates so well. Also, so will be uh, this regenerative rev revolution where we can prove that we're taking soil and we're moving it in the right direction. We're taking greenhouse gas, we're actually becoming a net sequesterer uh, and really cleaning up our act in a big way. So we, rather than pointing fingers, we can all get on the same team and um, just make our food system and life in general better for everybody.